I would say, very hard on you because we've been dealing with very tough, difficult issues in terms of uh, uh, theological doctrines. The, the eschatology is one of the hardest, toughest uh, in understanding, but it's very important uh, for all of us, uh, particularly during the end time. Uh, thereby, uh, you pastors uh, try to uh, digest as much as possible and teach them according to your own language. Uh, teach them slowly, okay? And, of course, using writing board, uh, please, don't just stand and talk. They will not understand as if they understand, but actually they will not. <laughs> Therefore, as I speak slowly, so you do so. Just speak slowly, step by step. And repeat, repeat. Don't forget that repeat. And review it again. Now here, lesson five is continuation from Lesson four. Uh, lesson four was what was early church Christians' hope? Okay? Early church. Now, when we uh, talk about early church, what is early church? What is early church? We studied already. Early church means here BC 4 and AD 30. This period, this is it's what? First coming. First coming. From this period up until when? 590. 590 is the year what? This is the first pope. Installation of first pope in Roman Catholic Church, which is a very historic moment. Historic moment. Because later we will go over uh, who the Pope was designed by God? Today, we consider we consider uh, later uh, Pope would be one of the best out of two best Antichrist, because that Pope was pre pre designed by God and installed right here at the moment of the end of the early church period, which is 590. Now, here, lecture 5 now tells us this. What was early church eschatology? Now, we've studied last time early church divided into two parts. You know, here, 3, 313 and 380 up until here from 8030 to 313 313 is the year of what? The recognition of the Christianity uh, by whom? Constantine first. Okay? And 380 is the year of official religion. Christianity became the official religion uh, of Roman Empire. By whom? Theodosius. Emperor Theodosius. You learned that. So 380 was the very uh, turning point for Christian history, 
particularly for uh, persecuted Christians who became free, free from persecutions out of the Roman Empire. You know, during that time, during this time, Roman Empire, Roman Empire forced the Christians to worship Roman emperor as God. Roman emperor was treated as God, worshipped by citizens of Roman Empire. So we call that emperor worship. Now, who, who was called the king of kings, Roman Empire. In the Roman Empire, emperor was the king of kings. So he was treated as, worshipped as a deity. Deity. Not only that, during that time, citizens of Roman Empire also worshipped Babylonian god. You know Babylonian gods are, it's a multiple god. Baal. Who is Baal? Nimrod. Nimrod. Okay, Baal, that's a male god. Nimrod. And also his wife, Semi Ramis. Semi Ramis. And, and also their son, Tammuch. Tammuch. So it's a multiple, okay, triad, three, three gods. Baal, Semilamis, and Tammuz. So the Roman Empire worshipped two kinds of gods, emperor worshipping and Babylonian god worshipping. Now, under the circumstances, Christianity became official language right here. Christianity became official language here in the Roman Empire in 380. By whom? Emperor, Emperor Theodosius. 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 Okay? 313, what is the name of that? Constantine. Now, by Constantine, the Christianity was not an official Babylonian, an official Roman Empire religion. Christianity was accepted as one of the religions, okay? At that time, what was the national uh, empire religion? Babylonian religion. So Christianity is one of the religions under the Babylonian uh, system, their religion. But as the Christ Christian population increased, increased, the emperor was threatened by Christian power at last. Emperor, Emperor Theodosius was forced by the circumstances that he ought to accept uh, Christianity as their official religion and abolished Babylonian religion officially. So it was replaced. They gave up Babylonian religion and officially, not only recognized, accepted 
Christianity as their empire religion here in 380. As a result, Christians was very happy. Finally, they, they could enjoy their religion, worshiping Jesus as their king of kings. Now, however, in those days here, at this time, after 380, what happened? Official churches were established. You see, a Roman Empire, Roman Empire, as I told you before, this is Italy, Greece, Turkey, and Jerusalem, and Egypt, all these Roman Empire. Okay, now, upon the, upon the official uh, recognition of Christianity, and in the Rome, they established a church. It's called Roman Catholic Church. So this is a Roman Catholic Church. They installed the Roman Catholic Church. And here in Greece, in today's Istanbul, at that time was Constantinople. Uh, they, they got the name is Constantine. Okay? It's Constantinople, the today's Istanbul. They established a Greek Orthodox Church. Greek Orthodox Church. And also here in Syria, there is Antioch. Antioch, this is Antioch, yes, Syria. They created Syrian Orthodox Church. Syrian Orthodox in Antioch. And over here in Jerusalem, they created Jerusalem Orthodox Church. And in, in Egypt here, in Alexandria, they created Egyptian Coptic Orthodox Church. We studied already. Egyptian Coptic. Coptic Orthodox Church. Okay. So how many churches did they establish? One, two, three, four, five. So church historians called these five, says five districts. Five districts of churches in Roman Empire upon 380. Five districts of church. Let me repeat. Roman Catholic Church, Greek Orthodox Church, Syrian Orthodox Church, Jerusalem Church, and Egyptian Coptic Orthodox Church. Okay? You teach them to your people by way of drawing this brief map. Without the map, difficult for understanding. Got it? Now, in these five churches, as usual, Two kinds of Christians mixed within those five churches. Two kinds of Christians. First kind is what? First kind we call Sunday Christians.
Also, we call nominal Christians. The same expression, nominal Christians. Or we call baby Christians. This is the uh, same, same meaning, okay, expressed in three ways. Sunday Christians, nominal Christians. Nominal means what? Only they have a name, Christian name. I'm a Christian, that's it. Okay, that's what we call nominal Christians. And baby Christians. These people, although they have changed their religion to Christianity, their, their daily religion practices are, remain the same as before. In other words, these people still, they worshipped They worshipped emperor. Also, they worshipped Babylonian god. And they worshipped Jesus as their king as well. Which is normal to even today. Okay? So this, this is quite, it's a mixed, mixed faith. Then, always, out of this, there are majorities. Majority. Majority Christians. Second, second level of Christians we call remnants. Or committed Christians. Or we call disciples. Remnants, committed Christians. Disciples, they only worshipped who? Only worshipped Jesus as their Lord. Denying emperor worship, denying Babylonian gods worship, nothing but worshipping Jesus. They are minority. Always, always as usual. Now, what would happen to them because of their faith? Huh? Of course, persecution. Persecution. Now, persecution by whom? Persecution by, here, Roman Empire, Emperor. And persecution by whom? Huh? Fellow Christians. They were hated by Roman Emperor. They are hated by fellow Christians, these baby Christians. Baby Christians. Then, let me ask you, what would be their hope? These people, their means these people. What would be their hope? Their hope At that time, 
they are hoping Jesus will come, Jesus will come, Jesus will come here, near AD 500. That was their hope. Jesus, please come, come back. There was their hope and belief that near plus and minus 500. Okay? These Christians, I, I'm, I'm saying that these Christians belong to where? There are here in the five churches, there are two kinds of Christians here. Two kinds of Christians here. Two kinds of Christians here. Two kinds. Two kinds. So those remnant Christians hope and their prayer was very simple. Lord Jesus, please come. Please come. And not only you're returning, and please establish Millennium Kingdom. Please establish Millennium Kingdom. This Millennium is, is what? It's a literal, literal thousand years. Literal thousand years. This here, when you come, okay, in this way, as you promised Jesus, as you promised Jesus, in the millennium kingdom, you, Jesus, Jesus, you will be King of Kings. You will be Jesus in the Millennium Kingdom. You will be King of Kings. Then, Jesus, we, we will be kings. We will be kings. It's over here. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. They quote it, that particular reference. We will be kings. Not only that, after millennium kingdom, There will be a new, new heavens and earth, new heavens and earth. In the new heavens and earth, we will be serving Jesus as a king, promised here in Revelation twenty-one twenty-four. In Revelation 21, 24 says, in the new heavens and earth, these people, remnant Christians, will serve Jesus as kings. So don't forget here, Revelation 20, chap chapter 20, verse 4, and Revelation 21, 24. So let me say again. They all believe with this. In 500, it will be a millennium kingdom. Okay? In this millennium kingdom, who will be a king? King of kings? Jesus will be king of kings right here. 
Okay? Is first Timothy 6.15 said, Jesus is king of kings. First Timothy 6.15. So Jesus, during the millennium kingdom, Jesus will be, no, I'm, so, I'm sorry, not here. After 500, it will be a millennium kingdom. Then, Jesus will be king of kings. The Bible says, First Timothy 6.15. First Timothy 6.15. And Revelation 17, 14. Now, this millennium kingdom, Jesus will be king of kings. Also, we will be, who are we? Remnants. Okay, remnants will be, there will be a king. Where in the Bible? Revelation 24. Okay. After millennium kingdom, there will be a new heavens and earth. New heavens and earth. Also, Jesus will be Jesus, king of king, and we will be king. Here, Revelation 21-24. It's a little complicated here. That was their hope. Okay, let me repeat again. Christians here, in this period, two kinds of Christians, who they are. Sunday Christians, baby Christians, nominal Christians, and remnants. Okay? In this period. Now, this remnant had been receiving persecution. Persecution by whom? Roman emperor and fellow baby Christians. Now, what was their hope? Remnant's hope? Jesus come at least near 500. Come. After you come and we know, as you promised, you will establish the millennium kingdom. Okay? That millennium kingdom, it, it, it's a revelation, chapter 20, 1 through 7. In chapter, Revelation chapter 20, verse 1 to 7, has a story, story on Millennium Kingdom. So if someone would ask you, where the Millennium Kingdom in the Bible? Then you will say, yeah, Millennium Kingdom stated here in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. Their story is this. Archangel Michael will arrest Satan. Okay. Uh, when Jesus' second coming occurring, before Jesus landing on his feet landing on earth, Michael will come down 
arrest uh, Satan and put him into hell, abyss, for thousand years. For thousand years, then at the end of the thousand years, he will be briefly released. That story is recorded here in Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 7. Okay? That thousand, the thousand years, these people here took the thousand years literal way. Literal. Literal means actual thousand years. Okay? So they believed Jesus, please come and you established thousand years kingdom as you as John describes here in Revelation 20 verses 1 through 7. Okay? Thousand years kingdom and you will be king of kings. Then we will be kings and serving fellow Christians. That was their belief. Not only that, at the end of the thousand years, <clears throat> as you promised, you will establish new heavens and new earth. There, also, Jesus, you will be king of kings, and we will be kings serving you eternally, serving you eternally. Here in Revelation chapter 21, 24 says, now, this belief, this eschatological belief, okay, held by those early Christians, we and theologians call this belief calls historical, yeah, historical premillennialism. Historical premillennialism. Okay. Yeah. Is it clear? Yeah. Now, let's have a break and I will continue more. So don't forget this. It's a, it's a simple idea, but it has a historical sense. Okay? Simple idea. So now, I am challenging all of you. You memorize this historical, historical uh, process. Okay, uh, happened during the first five hundred years' time, which we call early church period. Okay. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. <laughs>